Okay, so we're going to talk about seven tips for writing great unit tests. My name is Mark Littlemore. I'm a big fan of software testing. You can find me on Twitter at Mark Littlemore or on GitHub slash Mark L or at my website, marklittlemore.com. So if you're new to unit testing, first question always is, what is a unit? So it's sometimes described as the smallest component that it makes sense to test. So if you're a fan of object-oriented languages, C, C++, Java, it can be a class, it can be a single method within that class. But if you're used to functional programming languages, something like JavaScript, it can just be a function. Ultimately, though, it's up to your team to decide what makes sense to be your unit under test, so you can decide how big that is and how confident you are in your ability to test it. So why do we need unit tests? It's a good question. Unit tests, to me, are extremely important to your code quality. They give developer understanding, so they help to express the expectations of your code. What is it meant to do? Also helps to document the features. So if you're like me, as soon as you've written some code, a few days later, you can't really remember it. It tells future you why the code was written. It gives you a detailed description of why things are happening in your code. It aids in any refactor. So when you come to refactor, you first run the tests, they all pass. Then you can a developer can refactor and check that functionality is not changed. It also helps you to design your API. So while you're writing your tests, you're deciding what functions to call, what endpoints to expose, and essentially you're defining the API as you write the tests. Quality assurance. It definitely helps your team to ship quality code. I'd always advise you to have a suite of tests, unit tests, integration tests, to help you to ship your code to production. And ultimately, your unit test should be the first line of defense for your project. If the unit tests fail, you know there's something wrong in your code. So let's give you seven tips now for writing great unit tests. Number one, make the test names understandable. So these tests are for humans, they're not for the computer. So you should make them human readable with a really clear description. I always assume that I'll have forgotten what the test does by tomorrow. So I always need to make sure I'm very clear in what the test is called. You should also write the test names to aid your fellow developers. Um, so if someone else comes to your code, you may work on it for a while. Someone else may work on it. Make sure that they understand what the test actually does. Unit tests should become a living documentation for the features in your project. So as you change the code, which you will when you refactor, You'll update the test, you can update the test names, and everything becomes really clear. It's just the documentation then for your code. So let's have a think about some bad test names. I'll show you some examples. Things like multiply money by 1.2, adds 30 to balance, is username null. They don't really tell you why the test is doing something. I always say that you should name your test with the why and not the how. Explain why you're doing something and not how it internally works. So let's suggest for those uh, tests we did, let's suggest some better names. Let's add expected tax to purchase price. So rather than multiply by 1.2, 20% tax, we should say add expected tax to purchase price. Should increase the balance when deposit is made rather than adding an arbitrary number. Should set username to null. We're still saying that, but when the user is not signed in, that's what that variable username, when it's set to null, signifies the user is not signed in. So number two, we need to isolate our dependencies. Unit tests should be isolated from any external influences. By that, I mean things like databases or third-party APIs. And your test should only test the code that you've written, not external dependencies. You should attempt to replace your production dependencies with fake data. So these are things called stubs or mocks. So this just means we're returning fake data that we define from our external services. So let's have a think about some things we could stub or mock. Calls to services such as third party APIs like Twitter or calls to your own services. You might have HTTP requests to microservices that you run. You want to mock those out so there's no dependency on that external service, which you can't guarantee to be there while you're running unit tests. You should avoid serializing data when you can. So think about stubbing your data stores, your databases, and um, any sort of file access. You can just return fake objects rather than actually connecting to the actual database. 
And you should stub some state. You should initialize any preconditions that you want to have happened before the code you're testing. You can do those in the, in the setup of your test and you can mock or stub the data uh, and get it to return fakes. Number three, give your tests one reason to fail. You should always try and avoid multiple expectations in your tests. If you're testing multiple things, how do you know what's actually failed in your tests? You want to give one reason to fail per test. This makes a test much easier to reason about. So you can understand what has actually failed and then you can easily fix the code. Number four, make sure your tests are fast. This is really important for unit tests. They should execute as quickly as possible. And that's why we talked about isolating our dependencies so that we can quickly execute without actually having to wait for external services, asynchronous operations to finish. They should be really small in scope. Again, by stubbing our dependencies, we don't want to depend on any external services. And we should run in seconds, actually milliseconds if we can, and not minutes. Integration tests and end-to-end -end tests, they may take longer to run, but we should aim to, to run our tests in under a second. Number five, we need to make sure that our tests are independent of our environment. So avoid dependencies on specific machines or environments or environment variables, things like that. You want to avoid saying, well, it works on my machine when it fails on someone else's. You want to make sure it works on your all the developers' machines, your friends' machines. You want to make sure it works on the continuous integration server when you deploy that. You should stub your initial state. You should mock any external data again. And you also should avoid environment dependencies and ensure that you're not, you don't have config that you depend on on specific environments. Each test should be totally independent. So if you do have config, make sure you stub that so that the tests rely on the stub data and not on the data when it's running on a different environment. Each test should run in isolation. So that means you don't rely on the results of previous tests. Each test should have no side effects. So an example would be if the first test adds to the database, the second test confirms that something is in the database, don't get the second test to rely on the results of the first test. That's side effects. You want each test to be able to run in isolation in any order. Ultimately, if your test is going to fail, then your team is going to lose faith in those tests. And then you'll end up where the team doesn't want to write tests. Number six, test your units completely. So having some unit tests is obviously better than having no unit tests. I would always say that. But aim to have as much coverage as you can. Don't aim to have 100%, it doesn't matter, but aim to test the right things and test as much as you can. So always test the happy paths. I think this is really obvious. You always test the positive results. What happens if the positive things happen? Your services su succeed. But also test the unhappy paths. What happens when my external service fails? What happens if an error is thrown? I need to catch those. What do I do? How do we test those? And, and make sure you write tests for those. But also try and test those edge cases. There's always going to be those subtle things like someone passes a number when you expect a string or vice versa. What happens then? Try and test for those then if you can. Ultimately, try and test all the things. But as I say, don't rely on 100% coverage. That doesn't really matter. Just make sure you're testing the right things. So if you find a new bug in your code, that's absolutely brilliant. First thing you do, add a new unit test. Add the new unit test. The code will fail fix the bug, the code passes, you know then you've captured that requirement for the bug which you previously missed and you've got a new test for it. Number seven, ultimately make testing easy. It has to be really easy. So things you can do, you need to be able to run it from a terminal. So all of your developers need to be able to run just using, using a, a command window or a terminal window. Um, from your test runner, if you're doing things like uh, in JavaScript, you might be using uh, gulp or grunt, Make sure you can run your tests from there or run them automatically. Make sure they, they run as part of your build process. So do things like add Git hooks. If you're using Git, you can add Git hooks, which run the test before the code can be pushed to remote repositories. And that really helps the team. It means that you can't have tests that are broken being pushed up to your master branches. And make sure you add them to your CI servers, your continuous integration servers. You don't want to deploy the code onto your environment before all the tests pass. If any tests fail, the deployment's finished. You can't do that. So ultimately, what you've got to do is ask these questions of your unit tests. Number one, what is being tested? Number two, 
what should the code do? Number three, what is the actual output? What happens when you run the test? And four, what's the expected output? So number three and number four should be equal. If they're equal, your test will pass. So as a summary, seven tips for writing great unit tests. Number one, let's make those test names understandable. Number two, isolate those dependencies, especially those external services. Number three, give each test one reason to fail. Number four, make your test super fast. That's great for your developers. Number five, make sure they're independent of environment. Number six, try and test as much as you can, the happy paths, the unhappy paths, the edge cases. And number seven, let's make testing really, really easy by automating it, running it as part of your build process. So thanks for watching today. If you want to download these slides, just click on the button or I'll put a link in the description below. If you've got any questions, hit me up on Twitter. Um, you can find me on GitHub or you can find my contact form on marklittlemore.com and I'll do another video about testing soon.